My name is uh, my name is Ahmed Aktenis. I'm from Switzerland. I'm in Switzerland, located in Switzerland, in the beautiful town of uh, Biel. Um, we have our studio with uh, my business partner Nina. We opened our studio um, three years ago together. We started from from zero. We had um, we had uh, just five reformers, no uh, no customers, nothing. A studio reformers, and then we started just. Uh, um, just uh, keep uh, kept on uh, growing our business. Yes, yes, yeah. man. Just like jump out of the plane and build your parachute yeah, exactly. on the way down, eh? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. It was. Um, it was. Um, indeed, it was. Um, a little bit in this. Um, it was. It was really like that. We don't. Uh, we didn't even know how to build a parachute. And we stepped out of the plane. Yes. I was working um, before. I was working for um, you know, all my life for 15, 20 years in um, always in customer customer service. As um, always, I always had to do with um, with customers in my professional life. Yes. And then one day, he, we just decided when we were drinking a coffee outside in a restaurant, he decided to open a studio and start this new uh, this new adventure together. Wow! Yeah. Adventure is the word. Yeah, since then it is going on now. That's um, that's courageous. And I have, I because I have friends who are you know they're in office jobs and that's their plan to just work in the office job the rest of their life and they look at me like I'm this crazy man for not wanting like a, a consistent paycheck and wanting to just have impact and measure success by different things. Um, mm. So I have respect for people that are courageous like that to just jump out of the plane and, and go. It was, it was, um, it was risky at the beginning. Like you, like you said, um, you have, uh, you have your paycheck, you know, what is coming end of the month. Um, you can, uh, you can, um, you have uh, you have your money end of the month on your um, in your banking account, and then you start doing your own business with zero customers, and you have two children at home, a wife at home, cars, yes. and you don't know how <laughs> how much money is coming in end of the month. <laughs> yes. Fortunately, fortunately for us, it went well. Okay. Fortunately. <laughs> Would you advise someone to do it that way, or are you just like we just got lucky? Uh, it was luck is also part of it, I think. Luck is also part of it. But even if I'm I'm joking and saying this, uh, we stepped out of the window uh, of the plane without parachute. Um, my my background um, allowed me to do all the research and all the analysis before to know. What is the market like in in this town? Um, do we have any chance of um, of growing, of having any customers? But I think this also allowed us to um, to to have a solid foundation at the beginning. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It was it was like yeah, it was like stepping out of the plane with parachute, but you don't but you don't know wh- how to use it. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> That's uh, and that's I, and that's the part I wanted to get to. There's that part. Everyone thinks that you can just magically land at where you're at, but you're saying that mm-hmm. you invested through your background and understanding how to research and just putting in hours somewhere else. And those translatable skills are what mm-hmm. you brought to the table. Yeah. 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 Sorry. It. Sorry. It, it's the last bit I didn't get. Excuse me. Oh, sorry. Yes, yeah, so I was saying so. Like, so you brought your skill set from another area to the Pilates yeah. world, basically. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And this is also, I think, this is also helping today. Um, I um, I did my studies in um uh, in business administration and all this um all this administrating a business, how to grow a business, how to lead a business is also helping um uh, with the studio yes. now. Yeah, yeah, this this helped a lot. So what's your words of wisdom for someone who is working at a big box gym, who's working a few hours a day or working for someone else, and they're like, I'm ready to open my own studio. What's your, what's your words of wisdom to them? Well, it's, I think you just, have to, you, just, you just have to know what the risk is. What is your risk when you just, um, just go there and open your business and open, start with one reformer in a, in a wardrobe somewhere, 
and you just you just have to know what the risk is and when the risk is uh, when you can uh, when you can tell that the risk is um is is minor you don't have any any um major things to lose then just go on try and yeah. next year you will try something else absolutely i don't know if it's uh, wise enough but uh it's <laughs> in, in just a way you can try try to measure your um your um your risk and then go on yeah yeah no that's wise enough <laughs> the, um, well, because the reality is that's all it is. But the, the the piece in there is fear of failure. Yeah, right. All right. What happens when this was also always the question um, that I talked a lot with uh, with my wife also when we started uh, before we started the business, and um, she was also um, always supporting me and told uh, told me um, go on. What will happen? Nothing. You will then you when it's not when it's not working working out and you can't um, you don't have any customers then sell your reformers and start something else and this helped also a lot and took a lot of pressure yes. out of the way. Yes. Helps also. Yeah. That's you know um, we don't spend a lot of time thinking about what if it fails from a healthy perspective. Mm -hmm. And I find that that is a very liberating piece of the puzzle when yes, you want success, but you can't be so yeah. cocky about it that you're like, okay, well, I'm not gonna yeah. fail, so I'm not gonna think about it. It's like, yeah, really, right. if I fail, liquidate everything and start something else. Like, we should, we should be able to look at that side of things as well, yeah. Yeah, that's right. And um, I know, I think all, all, um, everybody knows also that the failure is a part of the way also. Yeah, without failure, you can't, you can't, Develop yourself and also um, grow grow something that is flourishing at the end. Great. Failure is part of the way. Yes. Can you, um, off the top of your head, can you think of a time in this process of running this business where you felt like, okay, this is failing. Let's shut her down. This is failing. You mean related to 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 our uh, business, to the studio, to Pilates? Yes. Yes. Um, when we started, um, what I, I'm coming, my background is, um, I came to, to Pilates from, it was my wife that, um, initiated me into Pilates. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, I think like every guy that started Pilates someday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then, um, when I started that, I, um, I was doing, I was always going to the gym. I lifted iron. I did my gym workouts. I, um, played soccer for all of my life. And Pilates just was was uh, nothing nothing interesting to me. Then with time, it that uh, that uh, that changed and that developed. But this background of um, gym and soccer and tennis and all what I did, once I thought about um, doing a hit Pilates class, okay, because I thought this uh, that would be um, that would be something interesting also for people because. Everybody is always asking, uh, "Will I lose? Uh, will I lose weight by doing so?" Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> not really. Okay. And then as um, we started this concept of, um, we called it cardio lattice. Okay. Um, with um, it's like it, it was like um, it was like um, uh, an interval, high intensity interval training where you yes. did your where you do your um, just your ex exercises like your burpees and your jumping jacks and then go to reform on the mat do your the other exercises and then alternate between, between that and that was the complete failure I have to say oh and really <laughs> <laughs> the people um, there were um, out of all the customers we have um, I think we had just uh, one or two interested in this kind of class and then um, after, um, after some time we had to, to cancel it uh, cancel it again and uh, yeah. go over to classical reformer and math classes <laughs> imagine that eh? <laughs> but you, you just have to accept and say okay we tried it was yep. it it didn't work and we go over to uh, other things right yes <laughs> it's a good idea yeah. at the time eh? yeah, yeah. It, at the time it was a really nice idea I thought I was uh, reinventing uh, the kind we uh, the style we do Pilates but no <laughs> 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 no but i think people, that's it like i mean people come to pilates with the sense of it being restorative right so if they want to do burpees they'll just do burpees and right like that's just it right like um 
but um so how did you like you said like your your wife introduced you to plies but like how did you yeah. find plies and decide that this is something i'm going to do as a career it was it took a, it took um it took a while um before i decided to um to do my um comprehensive tra um uh, training um it was um i think it was in 2014 when our first yeah first child um was born my wife started pilates for um just after um after giving birth to um for a child um and once she she asked me um why don't you come over to the studio and just try and I, as a proud man in my ego i thought no. i don't know martin just i don't know if you if you just uh, if you already typed pilates in google and then looked at the images right that was what, uh, what uh, that was what i was doing yes. and uh, um over there you see um white women in leggings doing some crazy uh, teasers and splits and just as a as a man always interested in uh, in uh, soccer and uh, gym workout you can't really relate to this kind of of uh, of image right right yeah and then um once i took all my courage i went to the studio where she uh, was also training I had the chance of being alone with the instructor. She just um, she just uh, scheduled one time clock for me alone in my private session, and she kicked my ass. And there was the initiation. There was yes. it, it was there when I, when I thought, now yeah, of course um, I thought um, yes, yes, this is something you can do. And yes. after a while, after a while, after one one or three years. Um, I decided to to go on myself with um, also with comprehensive training with um, Paul Star here in Switzerland. Okay. Um, and I finished, and then after a year, I finished the um, I finished tra uh, the teacher training, and um, we opened our studio just in the same year. Wow! Yeah, that's amazing. But like, and I have a similar story of that, like just getting my butt kicked the first day and thinking, okay, <laughs> I'm coming for this. Like, I, right? Yeah, I'm right. Not, I'm coming. <laughs> yep <laughs> and yeah, that's, that's right. you know and for those of you who are watching out there you we always talk about strategies and i think i mean we could talk at a high level of what are the best strategies to get men into pilates when the reality is they just need to feel it mm. yeah right if, if, if right. they could pack their courage in a bag and show up at the studio and just do it they'll yeah. be connected that's right. I think also um, sometimes when um, some women are coming uh, coming into the studio just to to buy um, to buy uh, vouchers for for their uh, for their husband or for their boyfriends, and then you think, um, okay, just do not buy this ticket, do not buy this voucher. The first lesson um, in our studio, the first lesson is for free. You can just come in and try. Yes. Give him give him my number. Tell him to call me, and then we'll fix uh, an appointment. He um, mm -hmm. he just hops in and tries um, tries on us, and after go and buy him this uh, this uh, this uh, sessions a package or whatever. Yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, you know, and that's that's exactly it here. Even within my studio, even if someone insists on paying for the per the first session, I will still actually give them the session mm -hmm. for free because yeah. your mindset is different. Like you go in. Yeah with the sense of, okay, let me just see what this is about as opposed to let me see if this is worth the money I just spent. Yep. It's a different mindset and you actually are more open to, to receiving and then they end up buying a package yeah. anyway, right? So. Yeah, right. Right, and um, the first session to um, in our studio to us is also um, kind of assessment to know where um, where, where, uh, where this person is um, located in, the, in, in how 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 he is able to to move what's his strength what we have to work and i think um we don't pay for um for this kind of assessment it is yes it is a complete lesson but in some kind it's also an assessment of um of the whole body in front of you the whole body right and that's a yeah. whole star approach right like like a like a formal assessment this, adapted yeah yeah right right um 
in um, the postal approach is that you, um, that you do a fitness uh, fitness screening before um, before um, starting with a customer. Okay. And the fitness screening is just um, how how is he overall feeling? What is his, uh, what are his goals? Um, did he have any injuries? Um, pain somewhere, uh, and then uh, you just go on and uh, do some exercises to know um, where is uh, where is located located yeah. in. in uh, in, in this fitness screening, and then after that, um, you go on, just go on. Yeah. Do you spend a lot of time talking goals and, and pointing people back to the goals, or are you more um, just concerned with them being able to just move and be consistent with their movement? We talk we talk a lot a uh, lot about goals in the beginning, but um, then um, after a time when uh, when people are um, are going on with um, with their Pilates journey, they they do um, their regular uh, regular work um, one time, two times, two, several times a week. Um, they get they um, they they lose a little bit um, this goal is going out of sight, and they are working on. They just they just um, start to to realize that the goal is to work on yourself and your body and then at the end have ju- and just have a healthy body that allows you to do everything you want in your um, in your daily life. And this yes. goal of I will I will I would like to look uh, lean or I will, I would like to lose weight or I don't know I would like to do split. This goal is going a little bit in the corner and um, the pe- yes. people are feeling that. That uh, that um, overall health is much more important in, in all of that. That's a uh, and that's a good feeling as a as a teacher when they discover that on their own too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah right, right. Um, I mean, I have also I have also my personal goals. Every um, every um, <laughs> I set goals to myself, like um, in three in three months, I would like to do I don't know. It's, kind of teaser on I don't know what kind of apparatus and then you work on that and you um, you just have your goal in mind and go to that but the goal is just the um, it's just um, the how do you say um, just the gift at the end but yes. the journey is what makes you feel better at the end yes yes exactly and it's like I was saying this morning just in my intro my client who was talking about you know, kind of not punishing herself, but like was kind of disappointed that she had a day where she ate poorly. She made a bad eating choice. Mm-hmm. And then as a result of that, she was like, well, I'm probably going to be two pounds up or five pounds up. Or if I do this, I'm going to be three pounds down. So our conversation shifted from the goal being hitting this magic number to enjoying the process of being consistent with your workouts. Yeah. Enjoying the exactly. process of moving better, enjoying the process of feeling better, sleeping better, waking up, not groggy, yeah. whatever the case is. And yeah, yeah as, as your mindset shifts, your goals shift, and you start to enjoy the process. And that's our job as teachers to help people to, to shift their gaze to celebrating the journey as much as the destination, right? Yeah, right. And also what, um, what I can observe also with people um uh, people um, realizing this um, this part also of the work of Pilates is um, they incorporate Pilates or the principle of Pilates also um, in their daily life. I mean, they are sitting on their desk not like me right now because this home office desk is not meant to to work on it. Right. But they're also they're telling also to to me when uh, when they come back to the studio. Um, I just realized I'm working at home. I'm working with my shoulders up and my back is round. And this also is part of is part of all this. Um, I mean, all the, this training with uh, Pilates and the, realizing that these principles do not only apply to to the work in the studio. You can also apply that to to gy- to a gym workout. You can do your bench press poorly, or you can do it with uh, with your with your sh- shoulder girdle. It's a connected uh, movement, control. right? Exactly in control. Your axial elongation on your spine can keep that upright into your bench press yes. that doesn't not that but that's not, uh, does, that does not mean that you're doing pilates in the gym but you are just realizing okay i have to have this connection to not hurt myself and then i can go on and do my workout yes yes i think our clients are in a good spot when they can 
self-evaluate and just translate mm -hmm. their, their Pilates mm -hmm. class to their exactly. everyday life. Exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Circling back to our body image conversation, we talk so much with women about this, and I'm sure like within your, you know, your setting, you have these conversations with your clients and stuff like that. Has there been a time where you personally have struggled with body image? Yeah, I would lie when I would say no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, it was, I was always, I was, I was always um, active and had a, had a sporty, a sporty life. And then um, we, um, we, we got married. I stopped doing any kind of training. I stopped football. I stopped gym. I stopped tennis. And my wife tried to prove me that she's a good cooker, that she can <laughs> really cook good stuff. Yes. And I always had to finish um, finish what was on, uh, on, 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 um, on my plate, exactly. Yeah. And after uh, one year, I think I, I just gained 12 kilos, I mean, 25 pounds. What? In a year? <laughs> Exactly. In a year, exactly. <laughs> and that was the point where I struggled also with uh, with my body image. And I think body image is not only it's not only related to to women. It's also, we as men, we would not accept or we would not tell to anybody that we are we're also struggling with our own body and our body image. But yes. it, it is in fact the case. It is the case, and we just have. And after that. After that, I um, I just started to work out again. I saw, I told my to my wife um, that she doesn't does not have to cook for five people when we have two at home. <laughs> okay. <Yes. laughs> yes. Everything got back again, and I felt great again. Yes. Uh, and now after after starting Pilates, now I do. I'm I'm really uh, I would like. When well, listening to people um, talking to, to you in this core conversation, I think, okay, you do Pilates in 20 years, in 50 years. Um, and I just started five years ago. I mean, yes. I'm really fresh into this. But um, Pilates changed my body in a way that um, the gym couldn't do. And I feel, okay, I, got, um, I, lost, I lost a little bit of um, muscle mass overall. But I'm much more stronger than before. I have yes. much more energy than before, and that was um, where I um, where I realized also that um, okay, mass is not everything. It's not healthy and strong is okay. Mass, right. no. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yep, that's been the same path for me, my friend. Okay. Same, same path. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I, I had a post about that, like where I used to, like maybe about 10 years ago, I, I did a lot of work with TRX and with some other companies. So when I was coaching mm -hmm. them, I had one of the shirts that they gave me and I put it on a few weeks ago and the sleeve that used to be tight was now loose. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yes. And there's just like, right. there's this gasp, right? Because they're like, oh no, I'm losing yeah. muscle mass. Oh. You're like. Exactly. Right. But then you're like, wait a minute, you're right. I am feeling stronger. I am, ha I do have better energy. I, you know, I have better mobility now. I haven't been, I haven't had an injury in forever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just flat out healthier now than when I was seven, eight, nine, ten 10 pounds heavier. Yeah. Right. That's right. You, you have, you, you, you have to remind yourself also that um, all this muscle mass you have to, uh, carry with you all the day and also nourish with food and keep it mm -hmm. um, just it is it is just not it is not not natural to have this much mass on your body yes. so it, it is nice on on uh, in a, on, on a flyer or on an Instagram post okay right. yeah yes. it's like a six pack it's nice also on a picture in Instagram but it's not, it's not, it's not the goal. It is nothing really um, functional. Nothing really um, that yeah. you need to have to be to be healthy. Absolutely, um, I like that you said that way. It's not, it's not the goal, and it's not functional. Um, but at the same time, we don't want to be shaming people who are, you know, six one, two hundred and five pounds, <laughs> seven percent body fat. Like if that's you, <laughs> like, that's great. That, no, yeah. 
that, that's great. And that's a, a whole lot of um, energy and of time just put in there to keep that, um, to keep that uh, upright. And I, I have a lot of respect for these people. I just can you not know, do it. I'm not this, uh, this, um, uh, how do you say, I don't have um, this ambition to do it. Yes. I like, uh, I, I think you, you realize um, I like eating, I like moving, I like drinking. Yes. <laughs> and all that you can do when you, when you would like to have 7% of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of body fat. Of body fat. Yeah, yes. of body fat. Right. That is hard work. It's work. That's exactly. Hard work. Yeah. And I have a lot of respect for these people. Absolutely. And then it's funny, you know, the, the flip side of that conversation was um, uh, at one point in my life when I was going through a kind of a dark time and I wasn't in, in the best space mentally. And I was out working at a gym and I weighed myself and did my body fat percentage and I was 4% body fat and just absolutely ripped. And it's one of those things <laughs> where you, you look at that from the outside and say, wow, I want to wow. be like that. That is just shredded. That's this, that, whatever. But what did it cost me to get there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? exactly. It's like emotional distress, mm -hmm. working 18 hours a day, living on coffee. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So we, we, we put people on a pedestal when they look a certain mm -hmm. way, but we don't know what price they paid to get there. Whether yeah. it's like you said, someone who was like eating a lot and training a lot to sustain this massive body mass or someone who is just like ripped to shreds because they're in a bad space. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And this, um, this, um, also this Instagram models, uh, Instagram fitness influencers, um, I don't know how to call them. Yes. Um, I have a lot of respect for them, how they, um, not, not how they look, but what they did to get there and what they yes. do every day to be and stay there. Yes. This, this is really hard work, man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I love how you're calling it hard. Like you're calling it, you have a respect for those things. Like we're not hating on it. We're just saying, okay, good for you. If you want to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. It's just, it. um, that, that's also, um, I think that's also, it's also important to, to know that all these kinds of sports and body, body images, body types, styles, exist and they have the there's place for everyone and everybody everyone. absolutely yeah. yeah absolutely because my, my my goal is, is not yours and your goal is not um schwarzenegger's and his goal is not the the pilates girl um on on my google pictures yes. Yes. it's not the same goal but er everyone is doing and doing his his kind of sports, movements, activity, just to get to his own goal. Yes, exactly. And when we keep that individualized approach to it, I think everyone's in a good spot. But when we start to chase mm -hmm. after someone else's goals, that's when you're not healthy. <laughs> yeah, right. Right? <laughs> yeah. Um, and then think about just like what you're saying about the pictures and the Google pictures. If you look on the wall, kind of over my shoulder there, mm -hmm. those, those pictures, right? And, this is um, you. That's me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my, um, the reason why there's pictures of me on the wall is because when my wife was looking for pictures for this space, there yeah. was no public domain pictures of men doing Pilates. Mm -hmm. Right. That's right. Um, it was just the same also to, to us in our studio. There's just one image of, um, of um, Joseph Pilates um, teaching one guy on a barrel. Doing a doing a grasshopper, um, and then um, there's nothing else because I just I just don't want to have one kind of image on my wall on my wall in the studio and try to promote something that it's is not realistic to to the people coming into the studio. Yes, and in 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 my case, I don't know if me as a male I will put just. Uh, girls in leggings on, on the wall into my studio with my, my wife will think about it. <laughs> that might not go over well. Yes. Yeah. Yes. No, yeah. I'm trying to be inclusive. 
You are both beautiful and I will watch the rest later. Bye bye, black cat. Yes. <laughs> She's awesome. I was looking for uh, for the same cup as yours, but I don't have uh, the same. It's just a little bit deformed. Oh yeah, you can just write it in pen on the, on the side yeah. if you want. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Noam is there too. Hi, Noam. Noam Garon. Good stuff. We were talking earlier about. Um, supporting our clients I was asking you like what your message is for your people right now and just letting them know that we're here for them um mm -hmm. can you just say some more about that i think i don't know how how um how it is in uh in, in canada or in america in general i mean i mean america's the continent i saw your um i saw your um it was was it a post or um where you talk also um talked about um America is not only the United States. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right. North America. Right. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I don't know how um, how the situation over there is, but um, over here in uh, in March when all this, um, all this uh, pandemic started, we just had a complete lockdown. Everything was closed. Um, um, just uh, the grocery stores um, open. The rest um, had to close. Yes. And two months later, we opened, reopened our studio again. And I felt like um, people are, um, they, they were a little bit scared about um, yes. going out again and meeting people. And we tried to, we just tried to, to give this, um, this, this kind of comfort zone in our studio to the people where they felt um, secure in, uh, in, in security when they ca uh, came in. Yes. And now, after some some months later, now, I, I think we 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 succeeded in that because all of our people are coming back now to the studio again, okay. and our virtual Zoom classes are going down, and nobody is coming in again. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was just it was it was just crazy. I think it was the same for for every um, for everyone uh, working um, working in. Uh, in this kind of business with people, um, we we had to close um, on the 16th of March. Yes, we had to we had to um, cancel all all of our uh, our lessons, and then you have to be uh, then you had had to we had to start to be uh, creative. What uh, what are we going to do now? Yes, we 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 didn't we didn't do any newsletters before. We started to do newsletters to keep people informed. We tried out our Zoom class, um, uh, Zoom classes, and it worked. It worked really, really fine. It, were, it, were, it was just, it was just perfect. It was a new experience. I didn't do anything like that before. Yes. And then uh, we start, we started with the Zoom class. The first one, the, uh, the initial Zoom class, was for free. We invited just everybody, um, er, uh, all of our customers invited. Yes. And uh, we told them also to uh, to invite the people they know. And then we finished up with 40 people in our first uh, first Zoom. Wow! <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you have you have your um, you have your screen on your laptop where you see people tiny like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's just no. an amazing experience. And after that, now Zoom is um, we we just uh, went back to normal class in the studio, reform that classes. Okay. And um, Zoom is still going on, but going on, but um, one once or twice a week. Yes. Because people now coming coming back now to your initial question, people now feel again in, in security, and they come come into the studio. They know that nothing will happen over there. We'll keep our distances. We will. Uh, we always uh, sanitize everything, every apparatus. Um, and, they, and that just um, that just worked out fine. This um, this um, creating this bubble of security. Yes, yes, yeah. Same same with us here. Like, and that's so key, right? Because this is their safe space, and we need to make it feel safe, yeah. not just you know emotionally, but physically. They want to feel like they could walk in, and then they can just be themselves, get the workout, walk out, mm -hmm. and not have to be scared in any way. So, yeah, yeah. that's great. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you had to make any other um, adjustments or pivots to draw new people in, like due to like the drop off that would happen with this time? 
we at the moment at the moment we didn't do any any um, activity in the um, uh, in um, yeah, in this way, um, we are just working uh, working with our people that we had from before. Um, it is just working out fine like that, yeah. because there's also what 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 we have to uh, what we have to do at uh, at an instance also for um, in the studio is um, to avoid that um, a lot of people are crossing in in in. Uh, in the changing rooms, uh, also in the studio, we had to give a little bit of space in between of, uh, of our lessons, yes. and that that um, the effect of that was uh, that um, per day we had to cancel two two lessons. That limits also the space for new people because all of our lessons are now fully booked. Great. And you, yeah, that that's yeah, that's great. That's the other side of the coin. That's great. Yes. <laughs> yes. But this 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 is also a limitation where um where you you are not able to um to really do marketing and uh, get yes. in new people. Right, exactly. Are there new are there a lot of plies instructors in that area that can, you can pull new people in to teach and stuff, or is it pretty sparse? Um, the um, Pilates community over here in Switzerland is um it's as I would say, I don't know, um, what I can observe from the outside, um, what I see in Instagram and uh, all this, uh, all these people, um, connecting with each other. I have to say, um, over here, that is not happening. Um, no way. No, um, the Swiss, the Swiss people are very, uh, how to tell it in a correct and nice way. <laughs> <laughs> say no more <laughs> okay yes yeah. uh, um, you said that it's funny you, you mentioned that because I, I i believe someone else in switzerland or somewhere else i spoke said the same thing they were saying the, the converse the united states is very connected and the pilates community yeah. is is very supportive and people do classes and, and support one another and in europe or switzerland or wherever they were from they're saying that that's not the case that's not happening because there's this um this um competition mindset um okay yeah everybody everybody's in competition with the um with with the other and um i just i just think there's enough enough people enough customers out there for everyone why can't we just do something together and um make this uh, this business this un industry in switzerland even bigger and greater than uh, that it is. Yes. But right. the mindset of the mindset of um, of Swiss people is not that one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can't. I can't. This is this is like talking in general. General, no it's a generalization. Yes. Yeah. Right. 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 Yes. I, I'm just talking about um, about um, Pilates studio owners um, mm -hmm. that I know um, and that. Uh, you you see them in in workshops and in teacher trainings and you just I'm I'm just someone um I, I like to connect with people I love connecting and also have this ex exchange with people yes. and then you see um not not everybody is interested in that and that's that's uh, frustrating <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> yeah. absolutely I think you can do great things together you can do really great things together um, yes. You don't have to work again against each other. That's exactly it. And, and it's funny, you know, and I know it's a generalization because Labrice is the one who referred me to you. Right? Yep. Yeah, she speaks very highly of you. Um, and I think that maybe just something that we need to explore, you and I kind of talk offline about, is just getting some of these, you know, these men in this place world, like uh, Philip, just uh, Scoop Pilates just popped up on here. Yeah. I'm not even sure if he's still yeah. in the room or not, but... Uh, but there's a lot of guys out there that, you know, collectively, like you see like Leslie Logan and Erica Quest and, and uh, those ladies are doing like a collaboration mm -hmm. and, and talking mm -hmm. bodies and stuff like that. That's maybe that's something that we can continue to explore. To that support would our, be just you know? great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm fully yours for that. <laughs> yes. There's a few guys out there that are like, you know, like um, some other gentlemen who just recently opened studios in the last month as well like even just to support one another with our grand openings or grand reopenings mm -hmm. and to do that sort of thing yeah. like 
I think, yeah. Yeah. Do, you, do you ever see how like, you know, it happens a lot in life where you see like the women are really good at getting together and gathering yeah. and supporting one another. And the guys feel yeah. like they're on this, they're on this island and doing their own thing because they feel like they are, you know, justifiably I'm, so. They're supporting themselves and they're taking care of, of business so they don't take time to, yeah. to, to connect, right? So, yeah. Yeah, right. I think that, I don't know if, I, if that has also uh, to do with our, um, with our, Pro, uh, with our proper ego, we we are um, we are not very um, very good in admitting that someone somebody else can do better than than us. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think that I don't know if uh, if that has also to do with that. It could be, uh, but um, I'm not seeing this kind of um, of attitude uh, at women a lot, but men, yes. Right. Our, right. Ego is on, our ego is uh, on our way and it's blocking us. Right. Well, this is supposed to be our area of expertise, right? We're supposed to be strong. <laughs> so no one's supposed yeah, to be exactly. stronger than me, right? Like, but. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. But as we know from sports, you play soccer or football, there's always someone bigger, stronger, and faster than you, right? So. That's right. Everywhere, is, um, in every um, kind of um, activity, there's somebody that is better than you, stronger than you, faster than you nicer than you um <laughs> yeah. you just have to accept and when you accept it then you can go on right exactly well then and then that lends to the question about your niche like so what are you good at right like who what is your area of expertise and i think that's the thing that we all need to like personally explore but i'll throw that we have about nine minutes left here but i'll throw that out to you oh. i don't fast eh that went fast. <laughs> I just, I just was uh, thinking at the beginning. Um, what do we with what kind of um, conversation we'll fill out one hour? And I don't know. You, you, you're probably also hearing that uh, English is not my first language. I'm teaching in German and French. English, oh, really? English comes. Yeah. yeah. This is also special. Uh, this is also special in in the town that we live in. Um, it is bilingual, um, German and French. Yes, yes. And it makes, um, that makes uh, teaching a class also uh, very, very challenging. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you, well, you will explain everything in two languages. <laughs> yes. See, there you go. You're better you, than me. I got one language. <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you just start, you just start uh, explaining an exercise like uh, exhale in German and then inhale in French. And then everybody, you, you just expect that everybody understands. Yes. So oh, yeah, um, we were we were talking about niche. <laughs> yes, yes. So you're so you're niche. So just say like, what? Who is your ideal client? Who are you most passionate about working with? I have to say, um, there's no. I I think uh, I have no ideal client, but I have clients I don't want to work with. <laughs> okay. <Let's just laughs> but be it's the, yes. I I I just think I just think it's it's the same for everybody. Um, yes. You just have people that you know, okay, like you said, um, uh, this one comes in and you will give him the lesson for free. Yes. Uh, you have this kind of people, but then you, you also have, um, and just be, let's be honest, you have also people coming in and you see, okay, today is not going to be a good day for this person. And yes. this person is going to take out all of my energy. <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, and this um, this kind of energy um, can I say energy sucker? Yes. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's um, that's your not niche person. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Um, this kind this kind of person um, you you know you will work also well with this person, but it's not the person that uh, that's giving you um, also satisfaction at the end. Yes. Uh, but uh, some, uh, some, sometimes it's also, it's also um, surprising. Uh, at the end, you realize that um, this person, in fact, had the best lesson of her life um, in mm. a class of her life. Then you just realize, okay, next time I'm going to think differently when she's coming in. Yes. <laughs> We're always learning, aren't we, Ahmed? <laughs> exactly. Always learning, you my friend. Uh, I think we, if you are open, you learn a lot about about um, about people, about mankind, about yes. uh, people in general. 
You just have to be open and look and listen. Yes. What you are doing now since uh, since March. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh man. Like yeah, we're learning a lot here, man. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yes. <laughs> right. Yes. yes. But yeah, you're right, man. Like that was like that was 54 minutes that we've just talked, and it just okay. absolutely flew by. Let's do that again. No doubt. And next time, probably I will see myself also. Yes, yes. Oh, for those of you who just jumped in, like he's he's talking on a black screen right now. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> still killed it, man. I don't know what you see. Do you see my wall? Do you see me? I, yeah, you're. That's drop the image. Okay, perfect. Yeah, it's absolutely perfect. There you okay. go. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. That was it's just a great thank conversation, you. and um, looking forward to continuing to work with you. Thank you. I'm looking forward to it too. All right. See you next time. Have a All nice right. day. Take care. I'm going to sign you off now. Bye-bye.